you. I'm so glad that all of you have joined us today for our amigurumi crochet pumpkins. So we will be making adorable little pumpkins and I'm gonna give you a pattern. I'm gonna give you some information. We're gonna work on these together and then you will probably become obsessed um, like I have and I just keep making them and I really can't stop. I'm actually thinking about giving them out to the parents who are coming trick-or-treating in my neighborhood <laughs> because I seriously can't stop. I'm super addicted to making these and I love making lots of different sizes with lots of different kinds of yarn and lots of different um, thicknesses and things like that just to play around. But yes, I am officially obsessed with making pumpkins right now. And um, I hope to kind of hook you into my journey. So if you know how to crochet, um, if you know how to do a slip stitch, if you know how to do a slip knot, if you know how to do a single crochet, those are all of the things that you're going to need to be able to do to complete this project. If you're very, very, very new to crochet, this might be a little challenging because any amigurumi, which basically means it's something that's 3D, is going to be a little bit harder than something that's flat, like a scarf or a blanket or something where all the stitches kind of lay in a straight line. So the ability to make this into something 3D is what makes this a little bit more challenging. So if you get too challenged, you might need to go back to the basics and make sure that you understand how to do your single crochets. And then you can kind of ease into this one where I'll show you how to read a pattern. I'll show you how to put some of those stitches together and be able to make it. So it looks like some of you are gonna play along with me. So let me know if I'm going too fast um, because we only have an hour together. And I think if this is your very first time doing this, this pattern might take you about an hour and a half. So because we might be a little bit stretched for time, there's one part where I'm gonna kind of skimp a little bit on the pattern. And instead of doing six rounds of something, I'm just gonna do one round. Um, this pattern Felicia's putting into the chat is going to be available. Um, also, if you wanna take a screenshot or something like that, please feel free to. And when this goes over to our YouTube channel, we will put this down in the link below the video. So um, we'll try and get this video out to you as soon as possible so that you can kind of go back, take your time, especially if you start to get frustrated at any point, we want you to take your time, rewind things, ask questions, do whatever you need to do to be able to do this. So um, yes, please watch now, try later. That's always a good theme when it comes to these videos. So what we're gonna need is we are going to use yarn. Now your yarn and your hook can be your choice. I'm going to be using a J, which is a six millimeter hook, and I'm going to be using Michael's Impeccable Yarn, which is from Loops and Thread. And the Impeccable Yarn comes in lots and lots of very beautiful different colors. And every one of your skeins is going to tell you how big the yarn is. So this says that it's a four, which is a medium weighted yarn. And it suggests that I use an H, but I'm actually going to go up to a J. So my stitches are going to be a little bit bigger using this yarn um, because I especially want to be able to kind of show you my stitches. If you want your stitches to be smaller and a little bit more hidden or a little bit more subtle, then you want to match exactly the hook to exactly what weight yarn you're going to use. So again, different yarn can make different pumpkins with this exact same pattern. So using this exact same pattern, this is a much larger pumpkin because I used a much larger hook and I used a much thicker yarn. So keep that in mind when you're picking out, but I'm going to be using an impeccable yarn and I'm going to be using this orange today, but you can pick out whatever color you want. Your pumpkins do not need to be orange. They can be whatever lovely colors you love or anything in your stash. This is a great stash buster. If you've got a lot of yarn, um, this is a good time to use it. So a J and the impeccable yarn is what I'm going to be using. I'm also gonna use a little bit of burlap because as you may have seen in the top of my things to make it look kind of like a stem, I like to put a little piece of burlap and use some hot glue and put that in at the end. I'm also going to be teaching using a stitch marker and using a yarn needle. And I have these plastic kids needles. Um, these yarn needles obviously come in adult versions too that are metal, but honestly, I love having a pack of these because Lord knows I'm going to lose it. So I like having a lot of needles rather than just one or two of them. So my suggestions to you are to have some kind of stitch marker. It can even just be a piece of yarn, a piece of pipe cleaner, something like that, and definitely a yarn needle. 
So we are going to begin with our slip knot and with our chain stitches. And so the first part, I'm gonna keep referencing this particular pattern. But to those of you who are already here, um, we also put another PDF along with this class. And this is a lot more um, visual. So if you're not able to keep up with the video right now, this is definitely something you can go back and kind of look at later on. But it shows a lot more pictures. It shows a lot more close-ups on my fingers so that you can see exactly what you're doing and how you're pulling it. So this is kind of written in a non-crocheter kind of way because when I first learned to crochet, it was really just about a year ago, honestly. And when I was doing it, the patterns didn't always make sense to me. So I kind of wrote them out in a different way. So this might make more sense to you if you are not a very practiced crocheter. Um, but all of this is good information for you to kind of follow along. And I'll compare this, those pictures to what we're doing in this pattern as well. So the very first thing on our pattern says that we're going to begin by chaining six, and then we're going to join them to form a loop. So in order to chain six, we first need a slip knot. So there's lots of ways to make a slip knot. This is just one. I like to point my pointer finger towards me. And I like to drape my yarn over my pointer finger. And notice that this part that's not attached to anything is called the tail. And it's over here on the right-hand side of my finger. And over here on the left-hand side of my finger is the rest of the skein. And this is called the working yarn. So I'm going to take my finger and notice how my left hand is holding on to both of those, the tail and the working yarn. And I'm going to twist my index finger. And I twisted it away from me backwards. And the goal is for your yarns to cross over top of each other. And once your yarns have crossed over top of each other, you're gonna reach in with your pincher fingers and you're gonna grab your working yarn and you're gonna pull that working yarn through in order to make a slip knot. I'll show that one more time. I'm pointing towards myself. I've draped my yarn over my finger, tail on the right, working yarn on the left. I'm gonna twist my finger away from me I'm going to put my pinchers into that loop where the threads have crossed each other. I'm going to grab the working yarn, not the tail, but the working yarn, and I'm going to gently pull that. And I'm pulling with my left hand and with my right hand as I'm tightening that slip knot. And now I have a slip knot to put onto my hook. So once you have your slip knot, our goal is to chain six. If you've never crocheted before, or if you haven't crocheted a lot, there are lots of ways to hold your hook. Of course, if you're a left-hander, you're gonna hold it differently than I am too. So please feel free to go back and find other tutorials to help you with that part, if that's what you're struggling with. But uh, what I like to do with my yarn is I'm gonna create tension over here, holding it on my left hand by going over, under, over, and around my pointer. And this is creating tension. So if I hold my fingers together, I can't pull the yarn through. But if I widen my fingers, I can pull it through. So this is creating what we call tension, which is going to help me kind of keep my stitches nice and even. So I like to kind of keep my pointer finger up and I like to keep these fingers holding onto the yarn. And then when I'm doing my chain stitching, you'll see how I do this and put it all together. So with my left hand, I'm keeping my chain stitch or my uh, slip knot, sorry, holding onto my hook, right up against my hook. And when I'm doing a chain, I'm putting my thumb on the thumb pad and watch my hook go over the yarn and under the yarn. This is called yarning over. So I took my, my hook and I went over, under, I'm grabbing that yarn and I'm going to pull the hook down and I'm gonna pull it through this particular loop. So I'm pulling down, and the hook is doing its job. It's holding onto that yarn. And the hook is holding onto that yarn while it goes through that first stitch, making one chain stitch. I'm gonna do it again, over, under, that's called yarning over. And I'm gonna pull that through. Now notice my left hand is grabbing onto that chain and I'm holding it away from my hook to kind of give a little bit of space so that when I pull that hook through, that loop nicely goes through the stitch that's already there. That's two over, under, that's three stitches, over, under, that's four stitches, five stitches, and six stitches. 
So I've made six chains and I also wanna take a second to point out what your stitches look like. So these particular stitches, each one of the stitches makes a V. So there's a left side and a right side to each one of your stitches. And so you can see me pointing with this over here and over here makes up one stitch. This is another stitch. And you can count these stitches by finding all the Vs. So you have one, two, three, four. I think I missed one. Yep. One, two, three, four, five. I actually might need one more chain, chain stitch. Six. <laughs> I obviously lost count, so I'm going back and I'm gonna make sure I have six. But if you have your six, feel free to keep, keep that where you are. One, two, three, four, five, six. So the one that's at the slip knot, um, the knot doesn't count, but right above it, one, two, three, four, five, six, now I have six. So there's a question in the chat about multicolor orange yarn. I think that would be amazing. And I definitely have been using this one that's orange and pink that I really, really like. And it works up to a very nice size pumpkin. So yeah, if you have one of those color changing yarns, I think that's gonna be amazing. So now that we have chain six, we're gonna join these together to form a loop. And that's the second step on our pattern. So when you join these together, you go back to the first stitch and the first stitch is right here after the knot. And I'm gonna put my hook through that stitch. I'm gonna split that stitch with my hook. So I went through that stitch. Now I have two loops that are on my hook. I'm gonna yarn over. Yes, good question in the chat. There we go, yarn over. And that just helps me to join this into a circle. Now make sure you pull your chain apart so that you can see that this is now a circle because the next step on our pattern is going to be to make 12 single crochets inside of this circle in order for you to have 12 stitches. So here we go with a single crochet. Let me just double check in the chat. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes. Good. Yep. So when you're joining them, I'll show the join one more time. I have my six stitches and I take this last, this first stitch right next to the to the knot, and I split it with my hook. So I go in the middle of that stitch. Now I have two things on my hook. I'm gonna yarn over, which means over under, and I'm gonna pull through those bottom two. And I now have done a slip stitch in order to join this into a circle. Okay, here we go with 12 single crochets into this circle. So to start my single crochet, I'm going to put my hook, I'm going to use my wrist and put my hook into the circle. So right now I have the stitches from the circle on my hook. I'm going to yarn over or I'm going to grab some of that yarn. I'm going to pull it through the circle. Now I have two loops. I'm going to yarn over. And now this time I'm going to pull that yarn through these bottom two. That is one single crochet into the center of our pumpkin. I'm going to show that again because we're going to do that 12 times. Go into your circle, hook first into your circle, grab some yarn, pull the yarn through your circle. Now you have two on your hook. Grab some yarn, pull through the bottom two. That's your second single crochet. Hook into the circle, grab some yarn, pull it through, grab some yarn, pull through both. One, two, three we have so far, and I can see my Vs. One, two, three as I go through the hoop, grab some yarn, through, grab some yarn through both, four, five, six, seven, eight. And if you start to run out of room to where you're gonna put your stitches, these stitches can be kind of scrunched and you can make more room on your ring just by kind of scooching those around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I have so far. 
9, 10, 11, and 12. And take a second, once you've kind of gotten the hang of that, to make sure that you really do have 12 stitches. So you can go back and find the Bs. So right here, this V makes up one stitch, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. And when you know that you have 12 stitches in your circle, this is where I'm gonna use my stitch marker. And I'm gonna put my stitch marker in behind where my hook is. So here's the stitch that's right behind where my hook is. And I'm gonna insert that stitch marker right there right behind where my hook is. And I now have 12 stitches. So the next thing, we have just finished round one. And if you have a pattern or if you print this one out, it's sometimes nice to keep track of where you are. So we just finished round one where it says single crochet 12 times inside the loop for a total of 12 stitches. All right. Now on the next part for round two, it says to single crochet in the next single crochet, and then do two single crochets in the next single crochet. And from this asterisk to this asterisk is a portion of the pattern that we're going to repeat six times. And basically what we're doing in round two is we're increasing from 12 stitches to 18 stitches. So since we're doing this pattern six times, we're adding in an extra stitch six times, which gets us from the 12 to the 18. Now, if you're looking at the other version of my pattern that has more pictures on it, let me show you where we are. So we just made the 12 crochet stitches into the circle. That's what it looks like. And then for round two that we're supposed to start, it says to single crochet in the next single crochet and do two in the next single crochet, that whole entire pattern six times. So what that means is we're gonna do one in the first stitch. We're gonna do two single crochets in the next stitch, then one, then two, then one, then two. So you can kind of see the pattern a little bit differently. This is my math brain for sure, the way that I like putting it right here. So I'm gonna be crocheting one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, all the way around until I get to 18. So where I'm putting my stitch marker, I'm gonna show you that part and then we'll begin round two together. So the stitch marker, if my hook is right here and this loop is still attached to my hook, I put my stitch marker in the stitch right behind my hook through both of those Vs right there. And that's my stitch marker. So now I'm gonna go around this circle with all the 12 stitches. And in the first stitch, I'm going to do just a single crochet. So the stitch, remember, is made up of both sides of the V. So when you go through your stitch right here, you need to make sure that you're going through both parts. So I'm going through the whole V, which means that I have this stitch, which is made up of two different pieces of yarn, and I still have this loop on the bottom. So now we're gonna do a single crochet, which means we grab some yarn, pull through the first stitch, grab some yarn, pull through the bottom two. So we did one single crochet into the first stitch. Now right next to it, this V right here is where we're gonna put our next stitch. But remember, we're not just gonna put one single crochet, we're gonna put two single crochets into this exact same space. So I'm gonna put my hook through that stitch, which means now I have both parts of the stitch, grab some yarn, pull through, grab some yarn, pull through, that's one. In that same spot, I'm gonna put my hook back in the same spot and I'm gonna grab some yarn, pull through the stitch, grab some yarn, pull through the bottom two. So I have one stitch coming out of the first stitch and I have two single crochets coming out of the second stitch. Remember the pattern goes one, two, one, two, one, two, all the way around. So that means that this next part right here has just one single crochet. So I'm going through the stitch, grabbing my yarn, pull through, grabbing my yarn, pull through. This one now has two single crochets. So put my hook through and do the first single crochet, 
and the second single crochet through the exact same space. And you can tell now that I have two stitches in that same space. Then I'm gonna go to the next stitch and just do one. I'm gonna go to the next stitch and do two. So you go through both parts of the stitch, that's correct. Oops, lost track. One. So I went through both parts of the stitch. I grabbed some yarn and pulled it through. Grab some yarn and pulled through. So I have one stitch, then I have two single crochets in this spot. Now I'm gonna go to the next stitch and do just one. That's the pattern. And then in this next stitch, I'm gonna do two. One, two. Doing good. Now one. And then in the next stitch, two. Going through both parts of the stitch. First single crochet, second single crochet. One. And where your stitch marker is marks your last stitch in the circle. And you are gonna put two stitches in where your stitch marker is. So for now, I'm gonna take my stitch marker out and I'm gonna put two single crochets in that space where that stitch marker was. So here's one single crochet and here's two single crochets. Awesome. So now I'm gonna put my stitch marker right behind where my hook is in that last stitch that I have, both parts of the V. And I've now finished round two and I'm ready for round three. So I hope that you're doing okay at home. Let me know if you have a question about what I just did. Um, I'll show you on the picture version again too. We're about to start round three. So in round three, you'll notice I wrote out the pattern we're gonna do two single crochets and then do two single crochets into the next stitch six times. So what that means is we're gonna do one, one, two, one, one, two, one, one, two, all the way around. And we're gonna go from the 18 stitches we have now, and we're gonna increase six more stitches to get to the 24 stitches. So that's what we're about to do in this next part. And if you want to, um, at this point, you can double check that you have all 18. So make sure that when you're counting, you count the one closest to the end of your circle and make sure one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Do I have 18? <laughs> Yes, 18. So if you have 18, if you're off by one or two, um, the nice part about this pumpkin is you can make you can make changes to the pattern as we go. You can decide right here that to stop and you wanna make a very, very small pumpkin and then you can just start the decreasing part and round it back off. So don't feel like you have to hit those numbers every single time. Um, we can kind of play around with it. So that works nice. So yeah, it's a multiple of six um, is how we're gonna increase it. That's why we start it with our 12 stitches so that every time we can multiply, um, we can use that multiple of six in order to help us. So for round three, we're gonna do two single crochets. So we're gonna do single, single, two singles, single, single, two singles, one, one, two, one, one, two. And we're gonna go around the circle. So here we go. I'm gonna do it a little bit faster, but let me know if I'm going too fast. So one, one, and then in this third stitch, we're gonna put two single crochets in here. So one single crochet, two single crochets. So we have one, one, two. Then we're gonna go one, one, and two single crochets. 
yes, feel free to change the pattern as you go. Some people are um, interested in doing half doubles or double crochets and absolutely please do whatever you want and you're still gonna end up with a really cool pumpkin. So we did one, one, two, 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 one, one. And then remember, I'm at the where my stitch marker is. And your stitch marker marks the last stitch where you're going to have two in there. One, two. And now if you went around your circle and count it, you should have exactly 24 stitches at this point because you've increased again. So there's a question in the chat that says, what about the whole, did you crochet the tail into the first round? So right now my tail is still just hanging out here. Um, I will use it at the end to kind of um, just push it in. I won't actually use it. I'll just hide it at the end. But no, I didn't do anything into the knot of the tail. I just did my 12 stitches at the very beginning to kind of get us that circle to get started. So again, at this point, if you feel good, if you want to start going to the decreasing part, you can. I'm going to keep building out because it looks like we do have enough time to keep doing this. So we're up to 24 stitches. Now the next round says to single crochet in the next three and then do two single crochets. So that means we're going to do one, two, three, and then put two single crochets. So it's gonna be one, 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 two, one, 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 two. And that means that that's gonna change. So we have three stitches. Here's one, two, three, just a single in each one of those first three. And now in the fourth stitch on this round, we're gonna put two, one, two. I'm gonna do four. Here's one stitch, two stitch, three stitch, four. In the fourth one, we're doing two. So the pattern is one, 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 and then two. One, 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 and then two. One, 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 and then two. And this is getting us in this next round. One, and I accidentally, yep, one, one in the wrong spot. And I'm at my stitch marker and at my stitch marker, I'm gonna do two single crochets right there. One, two, and if you wanna take a second and check that you have 30 stitches now, you'll know that you did that round correctly. If you wanna go back and rip something out, you can go back to the step before, but we've just done 30 stitches. We're gonna do one last round of increasing. And with this one, um, we're going to go into, we're gonna do four single crochets and then two, two single crochets. So in this case, it's going to go one, 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 two, one, 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 two. So you do four singles and then one stitch that has two singles. So four singles. Get some more working yarn to work with. Hopefully everybody who's following along is doing okay. Let me know if you have a question. You're doing great in the chat, letting me know where you're at. Do four. One, two, 
three, four, and then in this fifth stitch, we're gonna put two single crochets, one and two. Your piece shouldn't start to close. So you might've lost a stitch or two. You can always put an extra stitch in somewhere um, to give you two in an extra spot. So kind of count, take a second and count and see how many stitches you have. And if you're below the 30 number of stitches, you can always kind of rip out a couple and put it, put a couple more extra stitches in there. So you get back up to 30 and kind of make your circle back to a circle. So that might be what's going on with yours. All right, so I did one, two, three, four, and then do two single crochets into this spot. So at the end of this round we're doing, we're on round five. At the end of this round, we should have 36 stitches. You do have to focus where you are in the circle. And I'm sure it doesn't help that I'm counting out loud, but I am counting out loud mostly for my own sake. And for those of you who might be watching this video later. So now I'm going to do four single crochets. One, two, three, four. And then in this next stitch, I'm gonna do two single crochets. One, two. If you're not at the perfect count, just fake it or just roll with whatever you have and we'll make it work. We're still on round five. We're doing four singles. One, two, three, four. And then we're gonna do two single crochets one, two, one, two, three, four. I always like wanna cheer for myself when I get around to the stitch marker and I'm actually at the right place I'm supposed to. That makes me very happy and that is very exciting to me. So in the spot where my stitch counter was, I'm gonna do two single crochets. And if I went around and counted, I should now be at 36 stitches. Now we're making a relatively small pumpkin. And so if you wanted to continue the same pattern of increases by multiples of six, you can keep going. At this part in the pattern, what it says for round six through 12, so I just completed round five, in round six through 12, it says to just do a single crochet into each one of the single crochets. I don't know why I said that. Oh, in the next. So six through 12. So you're gonna do round six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. You're gonna do seven rounds of just 36. So what happens here is you'll notice that with the increasing stitches, we've been building the circle out. So now what's about to happen is we're gonna stay at the 36 number and we're going to be building up. So we're gonna keep 36 and we're gonna start making kind of the width of the pumpkin. So I'm gonna show you what I already have. Um, so you kind of know where we're going. I have a little movie magic here, but I'll tell you what I'm doing before I switch over. So here I have done rounds six and <laughs> you're at the equator somebody just said in the that's hilarious um or maybe that's a real term and I just don't know it but that's hilarious so once you finish your 36 and then you do seven rounds of that same number of 36 that's how you build up the pumpkin to be higher so this is what it looks like after you do all of those rounds um, because we don't have enough time to sit here and do those seven rounds, I want to make sure that I get to the decreases and I want to make sure that I get to the stuffing part and the sewing part at the end. I'm going to stop at my 36 and I'm going to start decreasing. Um, so I'm going to start decreasing on this one because this is the one that I'm doing. But I want you to know that if you have the time or if you want to try again later, this is going to make a bigger pumpkin, obviously, than the one I'm about to do because I did all those rounds. And if you want the pumpkin to be even taller, you can keep doing that round of 36 stitches as many times as you want to. And then we're going to move on to the round where we start something called a decrease. 
So when we decrease, we're going to join two stitches together. So instead of it being two stitches, we're going to turn that those two stitches into one, and that's called a decrease. And then we're going to single crochet into the next four. So basically, we're reversing the pattern. The last pattern we left off on was one, 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 two. So we did four single crochets, and then we did the two. This time, we're reversing it. We're decreasing and then we're doing four. So basically we're doing one, four, one, four. And then in the round after that, we're gonna do one, three, one, three. Then we go to one, two, one, two. And then we eventually decrease just to, um, just decrease until it completely closes up. So that's the plan for what's going on. And hopefully you can kind of follow along with that. We are skipping round six through 12 right now just for time sake so that we can get this whole project done in an hour. We're moving on now to round 13 and round 13 says to do a decrease. So let me show you how to do a decrease. Here's my stitch marker, here's my hook. A decrease means that I'm gonna go into this stitch, this first stitch. I'm gonna put both parts of the stitch onto my hook. I'm gonna yarn over and pull through that stitch but I'm not gonna finish the single crochet. I'm gonna go with my hook into the stitch right after that. So right now I have the stitch right after that on top of these two loops that are already here. Yarn over through that stitch, yarn over through all three. So what that just did was it took these two stitches and turned it into just one stitch up here on your circle. So I will show that again, let me undo that. And once you get the hang of decreasing, I think you're going to be able to keep running on your own. So here's a decrease one more time. I'm going to put my hook through that first stitch, grab some yarn, and pull through. Put my hook through the next stitch, grab some yarn, pull through, grab some yarn, pull through all three, and I've now connected those two into just one stitch. I've decreased it down to one stitch. And then I'm gonna do four single crochets in the next four stitches. Four, yes, <laughs> it's hard to say. Here's one, here's two, three, four. So I did four singles into each of those next four stitches. And then I'm gonna do my decrease again because I'm doing the backwards of the pattern where I'm doing a decrease one and then four, one, four, one, four. Okay, so here comes a decrease. Into the stitch, grab some yarn, pull through the stitch. Into the next stitch, grab some yarn, pull through. Grab some yarn, pull through all three. So that just decreased those two down to just one stitch on our circle. And then I'm going to do four singles in a row. One, two, three, four. Here comes a decrease. Go through the first stitch, grab yarn, pull through. Go through the next stitch, grab yarn, pull through. Go through, yarn over, and pull through all three in that decreased it. Here we go, next one. One, two, three, four, and now here comes a decrease. Into the stitch and grab some yarn. Into the next stitch and grab some yarn yarn over and pull through all three, decreasing that down to just one. One, two, three, four. Here comes another decrease. Through the first stitch, through the second stitch, yarn over, and now we've decreased it. Last four, one, 
two, three, and yay, I met my stitch marker, and yay, I have the right number. The fact that I am hitting the right numbers every time right now is a miracle because <laughs> I'm talking out loud and I'm doing this in front of you, and it makes me a little bit nervous, but I'm so proud of myself for hitting these numbers, which means probably next round I won't hit it, but I'm really excited. All right, so we just finished round 13. Now in round 14, it says to decrease and then do three single crochets. So round 14 says to decrease and then single crochet in the next three. And you're gonna do that six times. So your numbers are going back down. So this last round, we should have landed at 30 if you were checking. And then after round 14, where we're at now, we're about to land at 24 and we're gonna keep going down by sixes this time. I think we're doing pretty well on time too. So good job, everybody. We are doing it. And once you um, get the hang of this pattern and just sit in front of the TV, you can start cranking out as many random pumpkins as I have. So I would like to see your little pumpkin patch when you start, start becoming a little bit obsessed. All right, we are decreasing first. So into the stitch, grab some yarn, pull through. Into the next stitch, grab some yarn, pull through. Yarn over through those last three and we have officially decreased down to one. Now we're only doing the next three. One, two, three. So here we go. One, <laughs> two, three. I like that we're having a count along. Some people at home are joining me with the counting. I gotta do it out loud sometimes or else I will definitely lose track. Now I'm gonna decrease through this stitch, grab some yarn. Through the next stitch, grab some yarn, grab some yarn, pull through all three. And you can tell that we're starting to curl up and that's on purpose. That's what we're trying to do. Now we need three single crochets. Here's one, here's two, and here's three. Your piece is curving. I bet yours is curving like this instead of like this. And I bet if you just push the center down, yours is going to be curving in the same way as mine. So check that out. See if you see if that works for you. Uh oh, now I just lost track. <laughs> Anyone know where I was? <laughs> Let's see. I had a decrease. One, two. Okay. I think three. We'll see if I hit the number this time. And then I'll decrease. I do one, two, three, and my decrease. One, two, three, and my decrease. Yep, I definitely jinx myself. <laughs> One, two, and I should technically have another one. So I'm just going to make one up three. So I'm sure when I took a pause to talk, <laughs> I messed that up right there. But if I were to count these, I should be at 24 stitches right now. So we just finished round 14. We're gonna do one more round before we start putting some of the stuffing in. So with this round, we're going to do a decrease and then we're gonna do three, decrease three. Oh, that's what we just did, decrease and then two, sorry. So let me put my stitch marker in, there we go. Grab a little bit more working yarn. And here we go. Decrease. And then two, one, two. Decrease. Two, one, two. 
decrease. One, two, decrease. One, two, decrease. One, two, <laughs> I shouldn't have added that extra stitch. That's okay. If you don't have the perfect number, I promise it's gonna be okay. No one's gonna notice. All right, now we are ready for some stuffing, some fiber fill. And I am just looking around and realizing I don't know if I brought any in with me. Let me fix my yarn and then I will remedy that problem. And hopefully if you have any questions, um, we have about 10 more minutes and we should be able to finish okay. But if you have any questions, let me know so I can help you out with that. I'm going to grab a handful of fiber fill. So here's my fiber fill. And you can tell that we're already starting to kind of make a, a nice little bowl or a nice little pumpkin shape. And I'm going to take a little bit of this and kind of fluff it out. And then I'm going to put it into what I have going on with my pumpkin so far. And you can put as much or as little as you want. That's kind of up to you. And again, you can kind of keep switching this around and you can make this pattern your own and add extra rows, add fewer rows, make teeny tiny pumpkins, whatever you wanna do. So there's a question in the chat. My personal um, Instagram is 4M Coleman, but if you are making a pumpkin with us, I would love for you to share a picture at Learn With Michaels, which is another Instagram you can follow and you can learn all about all the different Michaels classes. So here we are with a little bit of stuffing. We've tightly stuffed the pumpkin with fiber fill and we're gonna do decrease and then one. So here we go. I don't know if I said, but my personal one is the number four M Coleman. There you go, Felicia just put it in the chat for you. But please tag us with any pictures at Learn With Michaels. I'd love to see the pumpkins you're creating. Here comes a decrease. And then just a single crochet, just one and then a decrease. I know it gets a little weird because we're closing it up and you wanna keep that fiber fill in it. So just take your time if you need to, but here is a decrease. And then a single one, single crochet, a decrease. One single crochet. a decrease, one single crochet, a decrease, and one single crochet. It's my last spot with my stitch marker. And now in order to keep finishing this up, I'm just gonna do a round of decreases until this hole is completely closed up. So I don't necessarily need my stitch marker anymore because I'm just gonna keep going until there's not a hole anymore. So I'm just gonna decrease. And I'm gonna decrease again. And decrease. And decrease. decrease and keep going until you feel like your hole is closed up enough. I think this is going to be my last one. And then I feel like that's pretty covered and pretty closed up so I can stop there. Um, now the next part of when I put this together to make it actually look like a pumpkin, um, you can do it like it says in the pattern for the assembly. You can cut six pieces of yarn and you can kind of cut each one of those pieces and that's how you can kind of stretch it to make the little ridges in the pumpkin. 
or you can leave a very long tail and you can kind of sew with just one. So I'm gonna show you both ways if I have time, um, but I'm gonna leave a really long, mm, no, I'm not. I'm gonna leave a shorter tail and I'm gonna show you how to do it using the directions first. So I'm just gonna cut a couple inches and I'm gonna take the tail and I'm gonna go through that last loop that's still kind of folding out right here. And I'm gonna pull my yarn tightly through that last loop. And now we have this adorable little pumpkin getting started. And I can easily just hide this tail by pulling this yarn somewhere inside of the stuffing. You can use your needle or you can use your hook, but I'm gonna hide this yarn. And then I'm gonna cut a couple of other tails and show you how to do it that way. Just to kind of give you the finished polished look of what your crochet pumpkin can look like. So in these written directions, it says to cut six pieces of yarn, each about 10 inches long. So I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna cut some yarn. And I'm not measuring, so I have no idea if that's 10 inches or not, but I feel like that's pretty close. I feel like I'm doing pretty well. Let's see, I have one, two, three, four, five. I need one more. Six. Okay, here's where my handy dandy yarn needle is going to come into play. So I am going to take this yarn and thread it through this great plastic needle that I have. Kids needles are great for my eyeballs, that's for sure. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through the top and find the bottom. And if you want to, you can make go through one of these stitches if you want to, just to kind of connect it to the pumpkin. But really the whole goal of these six strands right here is to tie them. And when I kind of pull on that, see how it makes the pumpkin shape? So it's shaping that. So you're gonna put these six through in different places, just to kind of give you some definition for your pumpkin. And then we'll stuff all these extra yarns in at the end. So if you don't wanna do six separate ones, I understand that completely. And you can just take a very long tail and you can keep sewing in and out and in and out. But this is just a kind of good beginner way, especially if you're not sure why we're doing this or what's going on. So I'm kind of making it almost into like a donut and I'm just pulling down on those when I'm tying my knots in order to give the pumpkin a little more definition. And I will be putting all of these yarns into the center. Just keep going around and put all six. So you're kind of dividing it into six sections. You can do five sections, you can do four, you can do whatever you want, just an idea. And then we will take a little bit of burlap and some hot glue, and we will put this together to finish it with our stem. Make it a little easier on myself and keep the knots towards the top so I can push all those yarns in. Oh my goodness, this is looking very cute. I can't wait to see. Oh, Linda. So we have some people in chat who are showing us their pumpkins. Linda did it. She did it. She made a pumpkin. That Oh, Joanna did too. That's awesome. Oh my God. I love that yellow color. Wow. That's really well done. I'm impressed. Please, if you have social, share it. I would love to see it on Instagram. I know, right? So, uh, wow. Really proud of that. Really proud of that. You should be too. All right, I'm gonna do one more piece of yarn. This might just be five instead of six, but I think I think I like my definition of pumpkin well enough. And I'm just gonna hide all those yarns. And cut some burlap, yay. So yeah, come back, um, save this pattern. Felicia, do you wanna tell the, the people who are with us right now how to save the pattern? The pattern or like the, the three links. dot how you usually tell them to <laughs> save the, the chat. chat. Yeah. Gotcha. 
Sorry. So definitely, if you want to save the chat, if you are on a laptop or a computer, within the chat, there's three dots. And once you kind of hover over the three dots, you'll see more. Click on that more and you'll see the option to save chat. So once you do that, you'll be able to get the links that have been provided thus far. And um, yeah, Thanks. happy crocheting. <laughs> I know, right? How's your pumpkin, Felicia? Um, I had to stop. <laughs> right. I mean, you're technically on the, yeah. So, I mean, you're multitasking. Yes, multitasking. So, yeah. um, right as soon as we joined the first circle, I had to stop. <laughs> well, yeah, but now you have the pattern and you can pick it up. Yes. So if you, if you didn't see what I just did, I just pulled all those extra yarns and I used my hook and I kind of pulled them all through here. And then I went ahead and trimmed these down. Even if they kind of fade back into the pumpkin, that's fine because we have, we have them all hidden. And then I'm going to take a little bit of burlap um, and you can cut your own ribbon if you don't have any of the burlap ribbon, you can cut whatever kind of burlap. I've even used like some leather ribbon, or if you have some cute, I had some lace laying around before too, that could make a really fun stem too, if you want to make a little bit more fancy pumpkin with some lace ribbon. So anything you want to do, you can. The pattern will also be available on the YouTube channel. So if you aren't able to download it right now, um, because I, I don't think there's a way to do it on your mobile device, or I'm not sure about how to do it on your mobile device yet. Um, we will try to, we'll talk to the powers that be and see if we can get this video up to you by the end of today. And then you can have that pattern again to access and you can watch this video again if you want to kind of make another one. I would love to see how yours turns out. Even if it's wonky, just please be proud of it. This is not easy. Amigurumi is not for the faint of heart. I'm putting a dab of hot glue into the center. I've rolled up my burlap into a stem. I'm just gonna hold it there for a moment. You can cut that down, you can make it thinner, you can make it larger, you can put it to the side however you want to. Oh, thank you so much. There are so many lovely comments in the chat and I really appreciate that. So yeah, you can go back to the page that you did your reservation for today and it does have that pattern on as well. So thank you so much for joining me for these Amagurumi crochet pumpkins. Keep going. I want to see your pumpkin collection. I want to see you make all kinds of pumpkins, all kinds of sizes, all kinds of yarn. Just really dig in and have a lot of fun with that. If you do um, want to use a really long tail to do your sewing rather than using the six different pieces, all you need to do for that part, I'll just kind of show you and get you a little bit started on that, is when you have a really long tail instead of the six different pieces, you can just push through the pumpkin and instead of tying off the six different times, you can just pull it to do your definition and then just come back through the top again and pull it and do your definition. And you can kind of just keep going with that same string. So if you don't want to cut the six different ones to do the little pairs, you can always use one really long string. And that might honestly be a little bit easier for some people. And then when you're finished with that, you can just go ahead and tie a knot at the end and put your little, um, burlap in or a little bit of ribbon or something cute and you can have the stem for this pumpkin too. Thank you so much for joining. I really enjoyed it. I hope that you had fun and I will see you again soon. Bye.